Hi, Season 5 just dropped, and uh, here I am playing the new mission in True Solo on the new highest difficulty in vanilla with maybe the new best overclock in the game. I'll go over the overclock in a future video, so stay tuned if you want to see me review it and all the other overclocks that came with Season 5. Uh, in this video, I'll just talk about the new mission type a little bit and a lot about the new difficulty. Um, the new mission type is called Deep Scan. Uh, it's a non-linear mission type, and the gist of it is you drop down into the center of a cave, you go and complete a couple objectives, three or five of them, called the Geodes, and then you go down a little drill elevator, drill dozer type section, to a final destination where you just pick up a couple objectives and uh, jetty boot out and extract. Um, it's non-linear, so you spawn in the center of a, of a big, big cave, and you go out in a bunch of different directions to find all the different geodes. Uh, and the way you do that is in the top left, there's a, a distance meter, which tells you about how close or far away from it you are. And also there's a little elevation indicator, which you can't see right now, but you'll see later, which is either a square diamond or an up or down triangle, uh, depending on if you're at the level above or below the geodes. As a moderate stationary count, I think it's a little less than something like a, like a refinery or even an ADAG, but it has some stationaries, which is pretty cool. Um, it's a little too winding, I find. It can be really, really annoying to traverse the cave without a driller because it the mission type kind of takes the form of a bunch of different levels of caves stacked on top of each other and the time it takes to travel through the caves just normally versus like just drilling straight to the objective is there's a really really drastic difference it takes so long to walk through the caves if you don't have a driller um the caves are pretty big too so without a scout it's hard to see find nitra but there's plenty of nitra on this mission type there's a lot of it um the new objectives are pretty fast, you'll see me do them here. Um, basically you just mine out the crystal geode and then you call it a thing and you just connect it and there's like a really really short little building portion. But mostly like it basically completes instantaneously once you find the objective itself, which is great. I think a lot of my least favorite objectives in this game, like repairing the pipelines, for example, is just they just take a long time, they're stationary, you hold E for a long time on them, those are really annoying. These objectives, they're, they're fast, they're quick, and they make you move around the cave, which is really, really fun. Searching for them is also like a reasonably fun objective to do. Um, compared to some of the other objectives in the game, like eggs, for example, where you just sit around and you pull them in sequence. Uh, this one makes you move around the cave a lot, and it makes you hold in a bunch of different locations, uh, which is which is nice. It's, it's a fun mission type in the first half. Uh, the second half, though, it's decidedly pretty meh, and it's quite long, but we'll talk about that when we get there. Now, let's talk about the new difficulty. Hazard 5 plus 2222, two, 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 or Hazard 5 all, or Hazard 5 plus max, I don't know. I'll probably call it Hazard 5A in my thumbnails, titles, whatever, uh, but we'll see how the community thinks. Um, yeah, it adds four new modifiers to Hazard 5 only. Player vulnerability, more enemies, tougher enemies, and more aggressive enemies. Uh, we'll talk about a little bit about what those mean later on, but before we talk about that, let's talk about what I like in difficulties in DRG, and what makes DRG as a game fun to me. Um, compared to like other games in the co-op PvE horde shooter genre that I've played at a pretty decently skilled level, like Payday 2, Vermintide 2, Killing Floor 2, Helldiver 2, Darktide 2, probably there's probably something else with a 2 in it that I'm missing here. Um, DRG has a lot of enemy variety, and it has really, really dramatically different threat levels. And that makes for a really interesting attention game in DRG. There's a whole lot of grunts that are really easy to kill and individually pretty low threat. And then there's 
higher threat enemies in, in varying degrees, right? Like there's menaces who are not that threatening, but they're really tanky. And then there's trijaws who are really, really threatening, but they have low health. Or there's bulks who are really slow, but they're really threatening if they're on top of you and really, really tanky. So there's a bunch of different levels, right? And different classes are really good at killing different types of enemies. Driller is really good at killing grunts. Scout is really good at killing spitters and tridraws and McTerra and so forth. And Gunner is really good at bulks. So a lot of the time, you don't want to be shooting at the enemies you're bad at killing, right? You want to be killing the things that other classes will have a hard time killing. And one of the things that results in, in is, as Scout, for example, just ignoring grunts that are about to get within melee distance of you to kill the more dangerous enemies. And there's a really interesting attention and positioning minigame going on there, where you have to kill dangerous enemies, but all the enemies are dangerous eventually, so you have to have some interplay between teammates and decide on what you'll prioritize. And sometimes, you what you prioritize is not your health. So you're willing to spend health, right? Like if you're a gunner and breaching into a new cave, you don't shoot every individual grunt to save a little bit of health here. You gun down the spitballer or the breeder to kill them ASAP so that you and your entire team can have more health, time, nitro over the course of the entire mission. And health as a resource is really cool to me in that way. And time as a resource is also really cool to me in that way, because unlike in a lot of other games of this genre, DRG has a limited timer that you're on that is Nitra. You can only be in a cave for so long, so you have to complete the mission. And the RNG of the caves makes it so that you want to walk forward and you want to find new locations and you want to explore new caves to find resources, to find objectives, so on and so forth, right? So. DRG, in that way, it rewards aggressive play. It rewards walking forward even while there are enemies on you, to a certain extent, right? Like, sometimes in a mining mission, for example, you'll walk through grunts in the tunnels uh, because they're relatively low threat, even at the cost of a little bit of health chip, and you walk forward and walk forward to find more kite, nitro, to find the next dirt, to find better locations to fight in. And... That is really cool to me, because in DRG, there's so many different resources that are in interplay, and there are so many different enemies and varieties of enemy types that it creates these really, really fun, interesting, chaotic situations, which are my favorite in the game, where you have to de decide on the fly what to spend your resources on, whether you want to take a little bit of chip here to grunts to kill that menace, for example, as gunner, or if you want to, you know, spend spam down shields or stun z4 to get out of a sticky situation or if you can conserve those if you can you know play around your positioning if you can move a little bit out of the safety of your bubble to kill that enemy aggressively or if you're willing to take a little bit of damage to get to a better position that's really really cool and that becomes even more interesting and more complex and more nuanced as enemy diversity increases right so like, if there's just grunts, then you can just walk, but now there's a tri-jaw, maybe you don't want to walk in a haphazard way, or maybe there's a bulk in front of you, so that's putting some positional cost on you. You don't want to walk forward, and eventually you have to walk backwards if it gets too close, so you have to spend ammo to kill that. Um, or if there's a spitballer, right? You spend ammo killing that, and you take a little bit of chip killing that, but that opens up an entirely different section of the cave for you to play around, where there's no spitballer anymore, so it's comparatively much more safe than before. DRG has this really, really cool interplay between a million different enemy types and four dramatically different classes that create really, really interesting and dynamic situations, which I really love. With that being said, Hazard 5 All is really bad at doing that. It, it kind of just sucks. It doesn't make the game hard enough in the ways that I personally find fun, and it goes too far in ways that I find unfun. I mean, don't get me wrong, I do appreciate that Ghost Ship is at least making an attempt to add higher difficulties to the game, right? Ghost Ship has 
for a long time, kind of prioritized fun, flashy things that appeal to the casual player base who hops on for a couple games every couple months and has a has a swell time in Hazard 3 and then doesn't touch the game again. Um, that's fine, right? It That makes sense as a business. It brings in new players, it brings in revenue, it brings in attention. Um, meanwhile, these top difficulties, they're appealing to a proportionally pretty small section of the player base. So don't get me wrong, I really do appreciate that Ghost Ship is going back on their previous promises of not adding higher difficulties and, you know, making something that really appeals to the veterans of the game who are willing to put a lot of time and thought and effort into it. Um, that's really cool. And there are some parts of this difficulty that I enjoy. Like, the more enemies modifier is really good, actually. It's a lot of the ways that we, in the modded community, actually scale difficulty. Um, it increases the number of spawns, that's pretty basic, but it also increases the number of disruptives that you can get. So those are enemies like menaces, like bulks, like stingtails, that increases the diversity of those that you'll see in a mission, but it also increases wave diversity. So how many different types of enemies you can expect to see throughout a single wave. Um, it also increases veteran count, which is just essentially how many guards and slashers there are in any wave of runs. Um, these are all ways that modded difficulties have historically increased difficulty. It's, you know, pretty typical. Hazard 6 does that, for example, to a pretty significant degree, and Diablo does it even more, and so on and so forth. This is good difficulty. It increases the diversity in waves, the different types of threats that assail you. That's cool. I wish it did make stationaries a little harder. I'm still not seeing that many stationaries. It's still feeling like Hazard 5 levels of stationaries, though the new enemies do make this a little more interesting. Um, and I do wish it made the swarms a little faster too. It still feels like very Has 5 like swarm timers, like you're still pacing the way you do in Has 5. Aggressive enemies is also pretty good. Uh, I think it buffs bug speed at level 2 at least to about like a hazard 8 level in the modded like as a modded analog uh maybe a little more than that and it also buffs uh bug attack speed or more specifically like bug cooldown uh but which which scales attack speed in in essence right um this actually makes it makes for a pretty interesting difference in how you kite bugs because it's a lot harder to just like jump through grunts the way you can do in has five or even difficulties like six by two uh because they bite you for a faster so you expect to take more chip um yeah so this this is a pretty good modifier i i like those two modifiers they're good i like them i wish they were a little harder or more enemies specifically but it is what it is now let's talk about what i don't like I think maybe my least favorite modifier that they introduced is Dwarf Vulnerability. I think it just sucks. Like, even with more enemies introducing disruptives, it's Hazard 5 still, so the game still mostly just sends a bunch of grunts at you most of the time, right? But then, all of a sudden, when there are a few ranged enemies, they just two shot you like you just die in two shots to an acid spitter now that's cool awesome that i don't know it's just not fun to me right um this leads to a lot of really silly situations like now i find that you'll just die through shields to chronar projectiles for example it also makes it really really difficult to do that interesting thing that I was talking about earlier where you tank a couple grunt hits to get value kills. No, now just like taking like four grunt hits all of a sudden you're at like a quarter of your health and it's really really dangerous all of a sudden. It also makes exploders a little more silly than they already were. You just like can die through the whole radius. That's cool. Um, yeah, the player vulnerability just really punishes those fun, messy situations that I was talking about, and it rewards safe play. It makes it more optimal to minimize the amount of hits you're taking at all times, which I personally think is really lame. I think it'll also cause players to gravitate more naturally towards things like bunkers, for example, where you 
can sit inside a you know a little hole and just never get hit by enemies and just kill all the enemies and it'll it'll disproportionately reward players who use these sort of strategies especially since the hazard five wave timers aren't changed at all so it's like still fine to play super slow and safe and you still have infinite nitra also it buffs friendly fire which is just annoying like i don't know why they thought that this would be a good idea um friendly fire is already like a pretty contentious part of the game in that a lot of like toxic situations can arise from friendly fire more so than most uh mechanics in the game um and buffing friendly fire damage by such a significant amount just means you'll see more situations where teammates accidentally or intentionally kill other dwarves and that can be frustrating it doesn't feel good to die from teammates it feels better to die from bugs um on top of that you'll expect to die immediately after you revive a lot more than in base hazard 5 and even way more than in most modded difficulties right like the the damage numbers here are just just really high even even from a modded perspective they're way higher than whatever whatever players mostly play um you expect to like die from one shot from any ranged attack or like two grunt hits or like getting tickled by a by a friend because of the buffed friendly fire modifier which sucks like i i don't know i don't know about you all i i hate chain dying it it's really frustrating it's annoying it makes it too impactful to just like go and create a resup for health the moment you die which is bad design in my opinion i think player vulnerability is is just bad in that way it adds a lot more frustrating situations and it punishes you for creating fun situations uh, on the other hand, enemy toughness, great change. I love that Ghost Ship is finally adding a difficulty where like half the guns are just fucking useless. That's awesome. Um, it's great that, you know, like guns like PGL are are getting even worse and that power attack cooldown in AoE are getting even worse and so on. Like that's just great. I, I love that Ghost Ship. Please restrict build diversity more. <laughs> the other the other thing is that like Hazard 5 plus 22222 or Hazard 5 plus all is like, it's just not even that hard in the grand scheme of things. Like, in a team, it's probably a little bit harder than 6x2, 40 Nitra. Um, it's probably harder than 6x2 just in general in true solo, though I'll have to play more to really see if that's true or not. Um, but it's like, it's just, it's just not even that hard. Like, I, uh, six by two is a big number, but in the modded community, six by two is like, like an introductory difficulty, right? Like, you play six by two, you can chill at six by two, um, but for the people who are really trying to push difficulty, they'll move on to things like Diablo or Diablo two or Alex two, and so on and so forth, right? Like six by two is not that hard of a difficulty, and neither really is Tazer five all. Um, part of this is that like pacing is just really really easy, like the swarms just take so long to arrive and nitra economy is still like insanely generous as it is in has five compared to even something like like six by 240 um but on the flip side sometimes you just die right like the the enemy damage is just so high that oh you missed a single spitballer dodge and all of a sudden you're at 30 health and then a grunt bites you and you just die or like you missed a dodge against a single acid spitter projectile and you've taken a little bit of chip and now you're just dead because the damage numbers are just so high and that just feels really bad like you just died a bs but most of the time the game is like pretty chill like in the background footage you'll see that a lot of the time i'm just i'm just walking around i'm just chilling but yeah it's just, it's just not hard uh and the ways in which it is difficult are really unfun to me personally. Um, I, I probably just won't play it. I'll probably play my other modded difficulties, things like ND and such, which are harder in more interesting ways and easier in the ways that are unfun. Um, and I, I really don't think that like anyone should force themselves to play Hazard 5 all to, you know, 
feel like they're they're playing the hardest thing the game has to offer because it's it's really not like modded difficulties are still significantly harder in a lot of ways in most ways really um and in more fun ways than in hazard 5 all um uh, yeah i'll if i was a has 5 pubber i would probably like just play with more enemies and more aggressive enemies and like not even think about the other two modifiers maybe maybe one take of player vulnerability but I, I just don't think you should yeah i don't think you should play with this if your goal is difficulty i think you should install custom difficulty or custom difficulty 2 when that gets released and play more interesting and more difficult difficulties than this anyways the new mission type yeah uh, we've been seeing the second portion that I didn't talk about uh, in the background here for a little bit while I've been ranting about difficulty. Uh, thanks, Gar. Um, yeah, the second portion is just not like that interesting. The drill evader section has a lot of enemy types disabled, so it like mostly just spams grunts at you. Um, and even with the more aggressive enemies that have way faster speed, you still mostly outrun them with uh, with the drill evader, so you don't really have to kill them. And while the while the mechanic where you can't resupply for this entire section is like somewhat interesting, it also doesn't really matter since you don't actually have to kill the grunts really. Um, even in solo, where you're you're at a pretty heavy disadvantage since like you know you can't spare one player the scout to repair all the things and perpetually go down. It's it's still like fairly handleable um and you still like mostly just ignore the grunts and for the brief sections where you can't ignore the grunts where the drill evader stops you can like just shield or you can also just kill the grunts um and it's silly that it's just all grunts because like they just die they just they just die uh maybe you'll see like a tri jaw or a web spitter but because most of the enemies are blocked from spawning here it's you know it's just grunts it's not very interesting at all. Um, sometimes you'll see a bulk too, but you outrun bulks by a significant portion, and also you can just like kill the bulk because you have perfect line of sight to it. It's it's not that interesting. I don't know. It's a little long for what it is, but I don't think it's long to the point of exhaustion. The way you know the refinery repair phase is, like I, you still get to kill bugs here. That's that's fine. I. I do wish there was a way to like speed it up or something though, or it was a little more interesting, or you know, you went through a cave and there were stationaries you had to kill or whatever, but um, you know, it is what it is. It's okay though. Um, in this ending section, you get jetty boots to like escape from the cave, which I think is cool. Um, when jetty boots were first introduced, I was not a you know, a fan of them because they were just like a thing that you randomly found in the caves and then you just won the mission because you found it and 10% of missions you just randomly win that's pretty lame um this is a more fun implementation which doesn't ruin game balance and is controllable like when you get it and why you get it um and they're infinite fuel so you get to do wacky things with them pretty cool i don't know it's a lot of fun um this new mission type is generally pretty good i think uh i think the season five is generally pretty awesome. I love the new enemy types. Um, the new overclocks are fun and exciting and unique, uh, even though some of them are pretty bad. I'll, I'll talk about that later. Let me know how you felt about this video type, where I just rambled to a list of bullet points over gameplay. Um, did you hate it? Did you just want me to like move on and get to the point already? Or uh, was it like kind of chill and like a conversation or whatever? I don't know. Let me know. Uh, like, subscribe, all that algorithm stuff. Um, I'll probably have like a, a new video at some point this week about the new overclocks. Um, yeah, Rock and Stone, happy mining out there. All that jazz.